At one time, it had seemed that Zambian President Kenneth Kaunda would rule forever. He had won independence for his country, emerged as one of Africa's most celebrated statesmen, and had single-handedly ruled Zambia for 27 seemingly endless years. But last week, Kaunda was finally humbled as Zambia's three million voters gave a dramatic verdict against him. He polled just 20% of the votes, while the opposition candidate, Frederick Chiluba, of the Movement for Multiparty Democracy, the MMD, got the rest. Chiluba promises to end the nepotism and corruption that characterized the later years of Kaunda's rule and introduce free market policies to revive the crisis-ridden economy. The poll result not only marks the end of Kaunda's supremacy, but also the end of a one-party democracy styled on socialistic lines. The transition to a multi-party system was remarkably peaceful. Poll turnout was extremely high, and by all accounts, the elections were conducted scrupulously. Western observers, including former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, who oversaw the elections, were impressed. Shortly after his landslide victory, Chiluba was sworn in as Zambia's second president, and the first democratically elected one in more than two decades. Kaunda acknowledged his defeat with a grace befitting his stature as one of Africa's most respected leaders. He congratulated his successor and said losing was part of the electoral game. This is the nature of multi-party politics. You win some and you lose some elections. Chaluba too accepted his new status with humility. You know, it's, the whole thing is a new ball game to me and I'm waiting for uh, the experts to tell me here's where you start now and uh, uh, your elder brother Kaunda ends there. Then I'll pick it up. But picking up the pieces is not going to be easy. When Kaunda had assumed power 27 years ago, he had inherited an economy that was rich by African standards. But Chiluba claims that Kaunda's socialism which included wholesale nationalization of industries and the imposition of agricultural collectives ruined the economy. Last year, food riots broke out throughout the country, followed by mass looting. Although time was clearly running out for Kaunda, he appeared to be unconcerned as the economy slid deeper into debt and food prices rose sharply. Chiluba will now have to tackle a crippling 12 billion US dollar foreign debt, runaway inflation, and a broken down agricultural system. But unlike Kaunda, Chiluba is unlikely to get anywhere near 27 years to keep his poll promises.